So just a reminder uh, about what we talked about last week that uh, when answering questions, if you aren't told how many decimals, how many decimals to round to, the industry standard for inch is to round to three decimals and the industry standard for metric is to round to two decimals. And second thing to make sure uh, when you're answering questions in inches or in metric or millimeters uh, to make sure that you include the units of measurement in your answers. So if your answer is uh, 0.325 inches, make sure that you write decimal 325 inches. Uh, inches we can, and again just a reminder from last week, uh, you can answer as a point, say 375, and say inches, uh, 0.375 in. Please don't write out the whole word inches. And for a metric, if it's uh, 0.3 millimeters, make sure you put uh, millimeters afterwards. Okay, so. Uh, today, what we're going to do is we're going to cover uh, how to add, subtract, multiply, and divide fractions. <clears throat> so first, uh, general rules for adding and subtracting fractions. When we add any fractions together, the denominators have got to be the same. Uh, we cannot add unlike denominators. So the very first thing we have to do when doing any adding or subtracting is to make sure that the denominators are the same. So if we come up against an, uh, a question like this, uh, 3 eighths plus 3 quarters, the very first thing we have to do is we have to make these denominators the same. Uh, so to do that, um, we need to find a number that will equally divide into the 8 and into the 4. So we know that uh, 4 will go into both itself and 8. So we can use 8 as uh, the common denominator. So let's demonstrate how to do that. So 3 eighths plus 4 times 2 is 8. So we're going to change that into an 8. So whatever I multiplied the denominator by, I also have to multiply the numerator by. So if I multiplied 4 by 2 to get 8, then I have to multiply 3 times 2, and that will give me 6. So my answer then is 9 eighths. Uh, when you give a final answer, you should always round your answer uh, to the lowest um, terms. Uh, or to a mixed number because this is an improper fraction. Remember last week we talked about a common fraction is like this where the numerator is smaller than the denominator. An improper fraction is when the numerator is greater than the denominator. So in theory there can only be eight eighths at the most, right? If you have all eight of eight pieces you have them all. Uh, so if you have 9 of 8 pieces, we need to change that into a mixed number. So basically, how many times does 8 go into 9? Once. So if you take that 8 away from the 9, you're left with a 1 remainder. Okay. So this is how I would expect you to answer your final answer on, your, uh, on any assignments that you do. So first, find the common denominator. Whatever that number is, um, make sure that you, uh, whatever you multiply the denominator by, that you also multiply that by its numerator. And we'll do one more example here. Okay. So let's do, <clears throat> uh, let's see here, let's, let's add three uh, fractions together. So 3 eighths plus 6 eighths uh, and let's do 
plus 7 sixteenths. Okay, so very first thing we need to do is we need to find a denominator uh, that, uh, uh, find a common denominator, sorry. So we need a denominator that both 8 and 16 will divide into. Well, of course, they'll both divide into 16. So we'll rewrite our fractions. So 7 sixteenths. Uh, how many times does 8 go into 16? 2, right? So, so 2 times 8 is 16. Then 2 times 3 <coughs> is 6. 2 times 8 is 16. 2 times 6 is 12. So we add these together. 7 plus 12 is 19 plus 6 is 25 over 16. So, because this is an improper fraction, we want to change that into a mixed number. To do that, we know if there's only 16 pieces, you can't have 25 of them, can you? <clears throat> so how many times does 16 go into 25? It goes in once. Uh, so if, we, if 16 goes into 25 once, then if you subtract 16 uh, from 25, then you're going to get 9 sixteenths. Okay, so let's go here. So just to show you, if we on a calculator did 25 divided by 16, okay, it says that we get 1.5625. So this number here is the whole number, right? 16 goes into 25 only once, so we write that here. But there's a remainder. So how do we figure out that that remain? How do we rewrite this decimal uh, remainder as a fraction? Well, we learned how to do that last week, but uh, to do that on the calculator, if you were to subtract, <coughs> notice up here, <coughs> excuse me, if you know there's 16 goes into 25 only once, then subtract 16 from 25. So 25 minus 16 equals 9. So you get 1 16 and 25 with a 9 remainder, and you write that 9 over the 16, right? The denominator does not change. So just a review. We're going to add these three fractions together. Before we can do that, we must make sure that the denominators are the same. Here we have two denominators that are 8s and one is a 16. We need to find a common denominator. So find a, a denominator that both 8 and 16 will divide into equally. Well, 8 will go into 16 and 16 goes into itself. So the new de denominator is going to be 16. Whatever we multiply the denominator by, Okay, so 8 times 2 gives us 16, right? And 8 times 2 gives us 16. And 16 times itself gives us 16. So whatever we multiply the denominator by, we have to multiply the numerator by. So 3 times 2 is 6. 6 times 2 is 12. And 7 times itself is 7. And that's how we ended up with 25 sixteenths. Since 16, there's only 16 pieces total, there can't you can't have 25 of them. So we got to change this improper fraction into a mixed number. How many 16s are in 25? Just one. What's the remainder? So if you take 16 away from 25, your remainder is 9 and you write that over 16 because the denominator does not change. Okay. Let's go to subtracting fractions. Okay, so just like in addition, subtracting fractions requires that the denominators are the same. <clears throat> if you're subtracting mixed numbers, 
then you have to just, uh, we didn't demonstrate this in addition, but we'll demonstrate it in subtraction. The principle is the same. If you're going to add or subtract uh, mixed numbers, you have to convert the mixed number back into an improper fraction. And I'll, I'll, we'll do a demonstration, uh, demonstration of that in a moment. So let's just do one example here first. If we had, um, let's say, uh, 15 sixteenths minus, um, I don't know, let's say uh, 2 sixteenths minus uh, 3 30 seconds. Okay, so before we can subtract uh, these fractions from one another, we need to find a common denominator. So 16 will divide into 32, and 32, of course, will divide into itself. Uh, so our new uh, fractions will all be written over 32, right? 32, 32, and 32. Uh, we know this one doesn't change. How many? Uh, 16 times 2 is 32. So we'd have to uh, multiply the 15 by 2 uh, to get the numerator. 16 times 2 is 32. So 2 times 2 is 4. So now that we have the denominators all the same, we simply subtract uh, the numerators. So 30. Uh, minus 4, uh, minus 3, uh, so is uh, 26, 23, 23, 30 seconds. Okay, so this would be your final answer. Okay, 23, 30 seconds. Now, if, for instance, <coughs> you had a mixed number, let's say 1 and 7 eighths, minus three sixteenths. Before we can subtract the three sixteenths uh, from the one and seven eighths, this being a mixed number, we need to um, change this into an improper fraction. So we showed in the addition how to take an improper fraction and convert it into a mixed number. Uh, now we're going to do the reverse. So how we do that 8 times 1 plus 7. We'll change it into an improper fraction. So 8 times 1 is 8 plus 7 is 15. So 15 over 8 minus 3 sixteenths. Okay. Once we've done this, now we need to find a common denominator. So 8 will go into 16, 16 will go into itself. So 8 times 2, oops, times 2 is 16, so therefore 15 times 2. Right? So 8 times 2 is 16, 15 times 2 is 30, minus 3 sixteenths. Okay, 30 minus 3 is 27 sixteenths. Uh, now we need to convert this back into a mixed number because it's currently a, uh, an improper fraction. How many times does 16 go into 27? Well, once, of course. And uh, what is the remainder? The remainder is 11 over 16. Okay, so 16 goes into 27 once. So therefore, 27 minus that 16 leaves you 11, and you always write it over the denominator, because that doesn't change. OK. Let's move on to multiplication.
Okay, so addition and subtraction, they are um, pretty simple uh, to understand long as we find common denominators. The nice thing about uh, multiplication, uh, it's even easier. So with multiplication, uh, what we're going to do is uh, demonstrate one quick example of how to multiply uh, fractions. We have, uh, oh sorry, let's... Um, and I just use the example I sent you already. We we'll use three quarters times eight ninths. So in multiplication of fractions, we don't have to uh, find common denominators. We simply take the three and multiply it by eight, and the four uh, we multiply by nine. So this will give us. 3 times 8 is 24, and 4 times 9 is 36. 24, 36 is the fraction. Uh, we want to, of course, um, reduce that into lowest terms. So we need to find a number that uh, evenly divides into 36 and 24. Uh, so uh, what is that going to be? So here, I'll just extend this a little bit just to show you so 24 uh, divide by 12 36 divide by 12 right uh, that uh, both of these will 12 will divide evenly into both so 24 divide by 12 is 2 36 divided by 12 is 3 okay so uh, this is our final answer. Okay, so three quarters times eight ninths. Uh, the final answer is two thirds. Okay, um, let's uh, multiply uh, more than two fractions here. So let's clear our screen. All right. Okay, oops. So let's take the example that I sent you on your uh, lesson plan. Let's go uh, two thirds times uh, five sixth times three tenths. So when um, Multiplying fractions, there's uh, uh, a simple way uh, to reduce. And as you've uh, been instructed so far, you know that uh, in addition and subtraction, any of the math that we've done, I've told you to reduce to lowest terms. Uh, so you could imagine a number like this if we uh, do what we were just explaining and multiply the numerators and multiply the denominators. 2 times 5 is 10 times 3 is 30. Uh, 3 times 6 uh, times 10 is uh, 180. Now we would have to find uh, the lowest terms here which there is a um, fairly easy way to do that in this example but I just want to show you if we write this again, 2 thirds times 5 sixths times 3 tenths. Uh, we can make, uh, we can get the final answer in one go rather than reducing uh, once or twice. And this is how we do that. In this, um, in these three fractions, if you have a numerator and an opposite denominator so it can be so if this is the numerator I'm talking about then this would be an opposite denominator this could also be an opposite denominator this is not right this is the denominator that belongs uh, to this numerator so if I were to find a numerator and an opposite denominator and find a number that evenly divides into both I can reduce those fractions and I'll demonstrate uh, Here's a numerator, a 3, and an opposite denominator, a 3. 
them being the same, I can I know that 3 divides into itself once, 3 divides into itself once. I know that 2 divides into itself once and divides into 6 three times, right? 3 times 2 is 6. 5 divides into itself once and divides into 10 twice. So what this allows us to do is to reduce our fractions prior to multiplying them. So now if I multiply, I, I follow the same rule um, and multiply across. 1 times 1 times 1 is 1. 1 times 3 is 3. 3 times 2 is 6. So uh, if I do it this way, I end up with lowest terms as my final answer. Uh, above, if I wanted to reduce, reduce this to lowest terms, I need to find a number that evenly divides both into uh, 30 and 80. I can quickly reduce that by scratching out these two zeros. Right? And so if the last number in the numerator is a 0 and the last number in the de denominator is a 0, I can reduce the whole fraction um, to 3 18 Now I just have to find a number that evenly divides into both. Right, So uh, 3 goes into itself once and 3 goes into 18 six times. So I end up with the same answer uh, just with one or two extra steps. Right. So I, I like this setup. Uh, take a numerator, see if there's an opposite denominator that um, uh, you can find a number that will equally equally divide into both that numerator and an opposite denominator. And I could have I could have used the two and the ten, right? I could have reduced this to one and reduced this to five, but then I couldn't have reduced this. Right? Unless I then, re once this has been reduced to a 5, then I reduce this one with this one. So just try and find a numerator and opposite denominator that would leave other numerators and denominators uh, that you could reduce as well. Okay? All right. Uh, last, we're going to consider um, division. So uh, I, I notice in, in the past a lot of my students have got a little confused when it comes to division because multiplication uh, seems pretty easy. You just multiply the numerators, get your answer, multiply the denominators, get your answer, and then find the lowest terms. And for some reason they see division on a test and they all of a sudden can't remember. But um, I'm going to show you, it's very simple, um, uh, but the first thing that you need to appreciate uh, is that uh, you need to know what a oops <laughs> uh, you need to know what a reciprocal is okay so a reciprocal is a fraction that has its numerator and denominator interchanged. Okay, so for instance, three quarters. Um, if I wanted to find the reciprocal of three quarters, then I would simply swap the numerator and the denominator. So the reciprocal of three quarters is four thirds. Okay, because I've just flipped the numerator and the denominator's position. So this is the first thing that you need to understand when it comes to dividing fractions, is you have to know what a reciprocal is. Okay. <clears throat> All right. To divide a fraction, then, you simply determine what the reciprocal of the divisor is. 
So let me just explain two thirds divided by uh, one fifth. Okay. Two thirds divided by one fifth. One fifth is the divisor. Okay. This is the divisor. This fraction is not the divisor. This is the number, okay, and you're dividing it by a fifth. How many fifths are in two thirds? So this second fraction, what you're dividing it by is the divisor, okay? All right, so to divide a fraction, determine what the reciprocal of the divisor is, and then multiply the dividend by the reciprocal of the divisor. So here's how you do it. Take 5 eighths, for instance, and divide it by 3 quarters, okay? We're going to rewrite this as 5 eighths, and instead of, well, we'll do that in a second. This is the reciprocal, 4 over 3, right? As soon as I interchange the numerator and the denominator this is no longer division when these two flip this division becomes multiplication okay so first step find and write the reciprocal of the divisor this is your divisor flip it it becomes the reciprocal okay and then simply follows the, follow the steps of multiplication. 5 times 4 is 20. 8 times 3 is 24. Okay? And then uh, we want to reduce. Okay, so we want to find a number uh, that will evenly divide into both 20 and 24. Uh, well, we know that 4 goes into 25 times and 4 goes into 24 six times. So there's our answer. Okay, so to divide fractions, go to your divisor, rewrite it as its reciprocal, and then change the dividing sign to a multiplication sign and then treat the equation like a multiplication of fractions. Therefore you'll get in this case 20 over 24 and make sure to reduce to lowest terms. Okay so that's your lesson on adding, subtracting, multiplying and dividing fractions. If you have any questions you know that you can email me uh, and uh, I will get back to you uh, as soon as possible.